this year so far, it's the worst year in I don't know how long for new home purchases. Do you think right now is a good time to buy? The answer is, I could not believe this, what happened last week. You guys closed the loan in nine days, while regular mortgage companies, the standard is 30 days. How the hell did you guys pull that off? We're gonna see reducing rates come down over the next year, year and a half probably. Mm -hmm. It was the first big move, it was positive. So people that are thinking they don't need you know, to like jump in immediately, they should get prepared. What are some of the challenges that you are seeing for a first time home buyer right now? Down payment, putting enough money down. Did you know that for a long time, the average down payment was like 10%. Now it's like 17, so it's gone up. I've heard stats that around 40% or even more of loan officers went and found another job because they were out of business. How did you guys guys manage to stay in business. The numbers are actually worse than what you're saying. 600,000 loan officers did not renew their NMLS. When times get hard, we bring value. I think I always like it because the people who just want a, a free lunch, they quit. And so there's more business left for the rest of us. You know, you do one thing wrong, people are gonna give you some grace. Two things wrong, they're irritated and probably not gonna give you a review. Three things wrong, it's systemic, you're a train wreck or you're deceptive in their mind. But relationships, that's the driver for our business. And if you're in a relationship-based business, everything that a realtor says or a loan officer says, I'm your realtor for life or a loan officer for life, if you really do that, you're good. I learned early on that I build relationships and I'll always be in business, but I also learned that I should not be doing things that I don't like because I won't do them. Ken, thank you so much for doing this, man. I appreciate it. I actually wanted to have a sit down with you for a while now. It was my pleasure. I want to talk about a lot of different things, yeah. but the first thing I want to talk about is what happened last week. We oh. finally heard that the Fed decided to cut rates and, you know, people very often, they don't know that there's not really a correlation between what the Fed does to the mortgage rates, right? Some people say, well, just because the Fed cuts the rate does not mean that the mortgages are gonna drop right away, right? But we did get a lot of calls from people who were kind of on the fence and now they heard that. So they're like, hey, we gotta find a house because they're under this, they're anticipating that. They think the, that rates just dropped a half a percent. They gotta get it. Yes, and they gotta go, <clears throat> right. they gotta find a house because now all the prices of the homes are gonna start going up again and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, what does this mean to a home buyer? Yeah, so I, I heard someone say it pretty eloquently last week that two things improved. One thing was net neutral and one thing was negatively impacted as far as people are concerned. So. The two things that benefited immediately are anyone like with a, or, or HELOCs, anyone with a home equity line of credit, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a giant credit card for your house, right? And um, rates on those are directly tied to the Fed funds rate because HELOCs are based on the prime rate. The prime mm -hmm. rate is 3% above the federal funds rate. And so when the Fed lowers the Fed funds rate, immediately HELOCs drop by half a percent. That's it. The Fed controls the Fed funds rate, which is an overnight rate that banks have to pay when they borrow money from the government or to each other. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Um, so the other thing that, that was immediate, and I'm gonna loop back around to why, but the, the, the next thing that was immediate was like car loans, because car loans are almost directly tied to, to the prime rate and um, or to the Fed funds rate. And so car loans should have dropped the payments, I mean, uh, rates. Mm -hmm. If they haven't, it's because people are kind of hanging on to it, they haven't figured it out yet, or they're hanging on to the profit, mm -hmm. one and two. Um, so those are two good things. Now, people should not go out and buy a car unless, if they're looking to buy a house, unless they plan on living in the car, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, take take your time, talk to a loan officer before you go buy a car, now that rates drop. But if you're looking to buy a house. What stayed the same, actually what went up a hair was mortgage rates went up a hair. So the day that the Fed dropped the federal funds rate by half a percent, mortgage rates actually went up the cost to get a certain rate went up just like this much. Okay, you gotta talk a little bit more about that because well, a lot of people, they're not gonna really understand right, why. So what happened, so the reason why is there are traders that trade mortgage bonds. Mortgage bonds or mortgage-backed securities are what moves mortgage rates. So based on what the, the, the traders feel the Fed is gonna do, like there was like 63% chance as of the day, the day of the Fed meeting and the, when they cut the rate, that they were gonna drop it a half percent. And, and the rest was that, you know, it was gonna be, 37% was mm -hmm. that they were gonna do a quarter percent. So we'd already been baking in that rate cut for the first, mm. like the, for like six weeks or so. Right? Okay, okay. So rates were neutral. Now, and they've kind of been flat since then. So what really moves mortgage rates is uh, fear of inflation or inflation, and then also like uh, unemployment numbers, things like that, big monetary policies. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we will see the 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 net effect for for home buyers is that like 
or re people who want to refinance is that rates are, it's a big event still. It hadn't, we haven't had a rate drop since April of 2020. So four years. And so they just been coming down for the, for the first six weeks before this rate cut. We're going to have another rate cut in November and another one in December. It's a given. They've already signaled it, the, the Fed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see reducing, you know, rates come down over the next year, year and a half probably. Mm -hmm. So it was the first big move. It was positive. So people that are thinking they don't need to like jump in immediately, they should get prepared. I think it's, you know, there's a, there's yeah, a, yeah. the saying that, you know, what is it prepared? Uh, what is it? Luck is when preparedness and opportunity meet. Is that, you ever heard that? Luck. I guess. Yeah. Luck. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, it does. Oh, he's like, lucky. Well, yeah, he was yeah. prepared and mm -hmm. an opportunity came along yeah, and he yeah, sees the opportunity. Yeah. That's all. That's all luck. Right. right. Yeah. That makes a sense. A lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, and then back to the four things. The one thing that was negative is that if you had a lot of money in a high yield savings account, you're making a half a percent less on that money now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Whatever. More of a reason to take that money and put it into a down payment on a house. Mm hmm. Right. That's, yeah. Yeah. So when you look at the charts starting in 2022, I think it was March or April, the rates, the mortgage rates just yeah. started going up oh, and up and up. Skyrocketed. And when they went up to about 7% or so, I've heard stats that around 40% or even more of loan officers just went and found another job because they were out of business because a lot of them were doing a lot of refis and the refinance business was dried up. just dried Overnight. up, right? Yeah. So especially those loan officers who were relying on refis, um, of course, you know, it's understandable, but a lot of loan officers were struggling for a while. How did you guys manage to stay in business and thrive? I know we've done a lot of business together and you guys have- Dumb luck. <laughs> <laughs> For real. No, so, uh, and I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 go but, ahead. So yeah. bottom line is, I think the numbers are actually worse than what you're saying. I think worse the numbers, so, so I um, I got these numbers from a friend, so, okay. who's in the business and okay. is a geek. Okay, so at the end of 2021, what I've been told is that there were, that 915,000 loan officers renewed their NMLS at the end of 21 for the year of 2022. Okay. Okay, at the end of 22, for the for renewing for the year to work to be able to work in 2023, we were down to like 315,000. It's like 600,000 loan officers did not renew their NMLS. And then what I've been told is that at the end of 23 to work for 24, it's more like we're down to like and I think this is, could be wrong, but like 179, 189,000 loan officers have still had their NMLS. And then of the ones that still had their NMLS, as of the second quarter of this year. If you did three loans, so one loan a month in the second quarter, it puts you in the top 50%, which is horrible. Like a loan officer before the pandemic doing a one loan a month, I mean, you probably ought to go get another job. It's, you're not, you know, you could probably find something. Your, your skills are probably better somewhere else. You know? Wow. So, but what exactly are you guys doing being proactive or your, there's relationships that you We've guys have We've just been around built? for a while. And we, you know... I have had a lot of coaching. There's a lot of people that just want to put their head in the sand. This is going to blow over. And I'll admit for the first, you know, six months to a year, I was in that camp. I'm just like, it'll get better. Don't worry. And we kept on extra staff when we should have been laying people off, mm. uh, but I didn't want to do it. And um, we just have enough relationships that we call, we stay in touch. We bring value. I think when, in times, when times get hard, I always like it because the, the people who just want a, a free lunch, they quit. And so there's more business left for the rest of us. So we picked up a decent amount of new partners. But th this year so far, we it's the worst year, and I don't know how long that uh, for new home purchases. So even the ones that are that are, are not weren't focused on reef. We've never been a refi focused shop from from what we've always wanted to help our realtor partners grow, and we've always wanted to help our our clients win offers. Those mm -hmm. are our two main things we want to do. And so we're always have been a purchase team, where um, and so. But there's we're like 24% less than last year, I think. It's like, this year. and last year was not good, you know, of home sales. Yeah, yeah. W what about month by month? Was it more, uh, did it pick up during summer months? It really picked up the last bit of time, the last two years, we've seen upticks that directly correlate to lower rates. Mm. And it's not because people are doing refinances, it's because they hear rates dropped and they, oh, I better go get some. And they go buy a house. Yeah. It gets people off the fence mm -hmm. temporarily and then rates go back up and they back off again. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, I think you can look at it and see if you track the 30 year fixed mortgage, it'll pretty much track our closings. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know, when you're, well, as I sell them, saying when, you're, when your stomach your, meets your belly, meets your backbone, you, you work harder. And so, you ever heard of that? <laughs> you got all these cool sayings. I'm full wow. of them. Okay, so, but if, whenever you are uncomfortable enough to, to make it happen, you make more, you work hard mm -hmm. and you make more phone calls. Yes. Things like that. So, yes. you have to do it, right? That's, like, you pretty much true. have to work four mm -hmm. times as hard last year to make the same as you made in 2022. Yeah, I, I look back at our business when we were starting with Tatiana, when we got our broker's uh, license and started do, doing a lot of real estate, it was 2011 year. Yeah, We just kind of caught the wave. Kind of That's how I felt because mm -hmm. investors were getting back into buying homes because homes just were so cheap. Yeah. We started buying and for a long period of time, we didn't really have to work too hard to acquire yeah. business, right? We did work hard on getting our buyers the right deals and closing transactions. But as far as like going and, and winning new business, we didn't really have to do much. Yeah, from Fall. 2011 through the pandemic, I mean, there were little blips of time that that were that were a little more difficult. Like yeah. 2018, we mm -hmm. saw rates go up to 5.25. There was a point in 2013 that in a month and a half, rates went up a percent and a half. And so everyone freaked out. Mm -hmm. and, oh my God, you know, we're gonna have to get out of the business. But other than those few little blips, um, you really didn't have to go looking for it. Rates were low enough that it was easy to buy. People were ab abundantly mm -hmm. going out and wanting to buy. Yeah, right? There was no yeah. lack of buyers. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we're going to see rates in the threes again soon? Well, I don't know. I mean, I would have had a crystal ball and knew that I wouldn't be here. You know, I love you, but I wouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, the, I would say that um, most of my career, so this is my 20th year, most of my career has been, rates have been between 3.75 and 4.75. Mm. So I just don't see, I, before the pandemic, I had done three loans for people, 30 year fixed loans, perfect credit mm -hmm. at 3.25 or better. I just don't, I, I see them going back down into the fours eventually, but I don't know. But if we go past, then it's a bonus. If we go lower than that. I think there has to be something that's happening that's like so bad yeah. that nobody's buying. We're in a recession. Yeah, yeah. Something's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm hearing less and less of buyers that we work with who are kind of already settling down and realizing that, yeah, those rates that were a few years mm -hmm. back, like it's just, it's unreal. You know, if yeah, it's, it's if it's in the in the low sixes right now, or you can get something soon in the in the high fives, then that's mm -hmm. that's considered great. Right, yes. Yeah. I quoted someone out today for the first time in a while, 5.99 on a 30 year fix. Wow. I know. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Um, so in America, when people say the American dream, people usually correlate that to buying a house, right? The American mm, dream. Home ownership, yeah. Yeah, home ownership. Do, and lately, lately, um, I've heard a lot of entrepreneurs say that that's just not the case. Uh, home ownership should not be considered the American dream. It's if you open a business and you succeed in business, that's the American dream. What, what do you think? What's your opinion I, about the American Financial dream? freedom to me is like the American dream, right? Mm -hmm. People come from all over the world to America because we reward people who do well in business. Now, so that's one part of, you have to like, you ever heard of good financial planner says you have to have good offense and you have to have good defense. You gotta mm -hmm. be able to make the money mm -hmm. and you gotta be able to defend and keep it in house. Mm -hmm. So I think like there are a lot of other countries that have much more robust social programs, you know, for people to, to kind of like foster this equality. And here we have equality of opportunity Self-employed is the mm -hmm. way to go, I think, you know? Um, but also I think home ownership is a cornerstone of our financial independence. When you own a house and you don't have to pay rent on it and you own it, no one can tell you what to do. No one can make you move. Um, and you, and that's, and, and you, and in, in our country, especially in California, where average appreciation is somewhere between five and 6% mm -hmm. over a long period of time. I mean, that's major wealth. Yeah. You know, how many times have you heard of someone's parents that bought their house back in 1972 for $75,000 in San Jose, and now it's <laughs> worth 1.8, right? Or something yeah, like that, yeah, right? Yeah. And I mean, there are many years where, you know, little houses that we had bought that were, you know, like, you know, maybe it was worth 300,000 in one year, it went up $100,000. So like you, you can't, it's very difficult for people to save that kind of money when they're renting. 
And it's interesting because when right now the social media, all these platforms, people are online and they are hearing conversations or some real estate gurus, you know, right? They're talking about like, oh, I bought this property for this much. This is what I did. The Airbnb this, you know, yeah. and I made this much profit. It's so easy to make money in real estate. Sign up for my course. You know, you're going to become a millionaire. No money down. But the reality for most working American people, especially the younger generation, I'm hearing that for Gen Z, um, um, home ownership is a big issue. Like when they when they're going to vote this November, like <clears throat> for in elections, like home ownership is a big issue for them, and a lot of people are trying to figure out like, or even like giving up hope that they will ever own a home because first of all, with inflation, with current rates, um, and the salaries aren't keeping up with yeah. appreciation and inflation and all that. So there are a lot of challenges, especially for younger people to buy a house. You are working directly with clients, helping them purchase their first home. What are some of the challenges that you are seeing for a first time home buyer right now? Down payment, right? Um, so putting savings. enough money down. Did you know that, that so it, for a long time, the average down payment was like 10%, right? Um, Not less, 10%. 10%, yeah. that mm -hmm. was the average. Now it's like 17,000. So it's gone up because home, because of affordability. They're putting more money down. So more people are now are tapping into parents or family. They can get a gift. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are down payment assistance programs that help you. I don't, I'm not a big fan of them because you'll find someone that maybe they're renting or living in a, like my, when I lived in San Jose before I bought my house, I lived in a, uh, 3,000 square foot house. It was $3,000 a month. And there was six of us from our church that went to it and, and or lived, lived in the house. And mm -hmm. so I was only paying like 500 bucks a month. I move here and I'm over 2,000, you know, a month. Mm -hmm. You just change, change your habits, right? So, you know, may, I, people have to shift if they want to buy a home. But but the biggest challenge I think is, is having a down payment. And now with the NAR settlement, which is a whole nother conversation, like if they have to pay for an agent, that's mm -hmm. going to be tough. Yeah, and they don't yeah. pay for an agent and the seller won't pay for it, then I, I feel bad for them because they're going to have very poor representation if they work with someone who'll write a contract for them for fifty, you know, $500 or whatever it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I would say like, I mean, the average age of a first-time homeowner is 30. So you should, you know, if, if people are wanting to buy in their 20s, good for them. I mean, maybe they should do some house hacking, come together, two, three friends get to come together and buy a house. I've seen that happen. We had three brothers one time that bought a house together. And then, and one was married. <laughs> so those <laughs> odd dynamics. But they bought their home. Uh, it was a little townhouse. They a three bedroom, two bath townhouse. Mm -hmm. They they grew out of it, and then they each went out and bought their own houses. But they built up some equity over the course of like seven, eight years, mm -hmm. and then they sold that house, bought a new one. Yeah. So, but I I, I think you know the way of getting around that. And, and if you were going to ask this question, I'm sorry, but like with a, with every problem, I like to bring an answer. You know, what I'm saying like a solution. And so I think that like people that. Um, are having a hard time, they do a house hack, they buy a, rent out rooms, right? I mean, there's all kinds of creative ways you can do it. Yeah. If you're willing, if you really want to do it badly enough and you don't have a huge ego that says, I, I'm not going to have rent out a room, like you can you can figure it out, right? Come together and figure yeah, it out. Yeah. So are you a fan of those uh, zero down programs? I'm not. <laughs> well, and here's why. I, I think I started to say it and I, I, my ADHD kicked in real hard. <laughs> so um, I would the reason I don't like them is not because I don't think that they're that they have a place. They do. But you're looking at um, uh, like in California, maybe you're buying a five hundred thousand dollars house in Roseville or whatever it is. You're putting three percent down. You get a you get a three percent like uh, silent second loan mm -hmm. and another two percent. That that two percent all it does is pay for the fee for the for the first loan that you get because it's how, how Calhafa works. Can you explain that a little bit more? Because a lot of people are confused. They're thinking that, you know, the government is actually giving you this money for down payment, but you're saying that, no, it's actually, there are some grants out there that, that are work. Um, I, I don't do many, many, I mean, I'm talking like if I do a hundred loans in a, in a year, I'll do one or two, mm -hmm. like down payment assistance is the fundamental problem I have with them is that usually the people that are, that are, going and they haven't saved any money. That's why you use a down payment assistance loan. And so you have not saved any money. You've been living at your parents or living paying rent for a thousand bucks a month. Now you want to get into a $3,000 mortgage and you don't, and you haven't been saving money. What, what do you think is going to happen? And a lot of these, so a lot of these loans, you have a 97% first, 
They give you a 3% second and another 3% or 2%, maybe a 3% third. Right now, they, they, they stopped, I don't know what they are now, but they stopped them for a while because it was like, you have to pay 8.25%. They jack up the rate on the first to give you this free, it's, it's zero, zero percent money on a 6% of the purchase price. You're paying higher rate on 97%. That's kind of what, another problem I have with it. Mm -hmm. And then 2% of the, of the 6% you get goes paying a fee to pay the broker that helps you find the loan. Yeah. So you're really only getting like three to 4% assistance and so, but you're, but you end up owing like 102% of the home's value, <laughs> right? And so then, then you can't refinance that until you can get down to 95% in mm -hmm. most cases, 97 and some. And, um, and so it may take you a couple of years. And so right now when rates are high, historically high compared to everything we've seen in the last 20 years, why would you want to lock yourself in for two years to, to have to stay in that loan? I am not a fan. Do you think right now is a good time to buy? Uh, so the, the answer is, it's, I don't know if it's the right time to buy for everyone because it's kind of particular to their situation, but it's always a good time to own. It's always a good time. Is that a good way of skirting the question? Oh. I do, but here's what you get. The, 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 you mentioned earlier that people thought they had to get in right now, otherwise home prices are going to go up too fast. Mm -hmm. There is, a, like I mentioned, a direct correlation between like rates when they drop and activity. So if you're a seller and you get one offer on a home, as a buyer, if I'm your buyer, Kind of, do I have any negotiating power with you if, if I'm the only offer? Mm. You sure? If I'm the only offer <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, on your problem, right. you're the seller. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, yes. I didn't say it right. Yeah, I'm talking about, I you thought were, you were talking about the seller. Yeah, yeah, you're the seller on the buyer. Uh, yes, yeah, so you thought it, you're the buyer. Okay, <laughs> Paul, Paul is the seller. I am the buyer. So I have, I have some room to negotiate because yes. I'm the only offer. Now, how many other offers does it take for the seller to, to get, for the seller to get? To change their attitude to like bring your highest and best. Multiple offers. Yeah, one more offer. Yeah. Two offers is a is totally different. So when rates come down and more offer more people come in the market, if if I think the house is pretty, isn't someone else probably gonna think it's pretty mm -hmm. and want to make an offer? So now but that happens like right now we're we have, we're not down, the rates aren't down yet. Buy, you can always refinance in a year. I have, I mean, right now that's a lot of what I'm doing is refinancing people that bought a year, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Some people that are at 7.99. I'm helping one guy. It was a $650,000 purchase. He put 5% down. He's going to save, it's like $837 a month. Wow. He's going to drop, this guy's case, not everyone will qualify, but he will come down from, you know, 7.99 to 6.125. Wow. That's a lot of money to save. Yeah. And then he'll yeah. probably refinance in a year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. So he he bought when rates were high. He had no other competition. Now his, worth, his, his house is already worth 60,000 more over the last year. Yeah. Not 10%, mm -hmm. not bad. Okay, the next question is more philosophical. So uh, there's this guy, his name is Rick Edelman. And the first I mean, time yeah. I heard about him was probably back in 2007, 2008. And he was always saying, and up to this day, he's saying this, he says that he believes that um, you should have the biggest high mortgage, leverage. the highest, yeah, high leverage. So the biggest mortgage and never rush to pay it off compared to Dave Ramsey, who's saying, get out of debt, get, get a 50, uh, 15 year 15 mortgage. Year. Yeah. And, uh, and if you can make more payments towards the principal yep. to bring down the balance so that you can pay off, get out of debt as soon as possible. Yeah. Rick Adelman saying, no, leverage uh, everything, le leverage everything yeah. use that and you can invest, you can do whatever. Like, well, what about well, you? Like, you know what, what Rick Edelman's ultimately selling? And I went to a, a Rick Edelman course when I got my certified mortgage planner, uh, you know, designation, mm -hmm. I went through a Rick Edelman course. Uh, do you know what he's selling, really? Yeah, permanent life insurance, universal, oh, universal life insurance. So he's he he he's wants you to it's build build well through the the in the VULs, the mm -hmm. variable under you know life insurance. Yes, yes. Um. So it's really if you have an amazing amount of cash flow, like if you're making thirty thousand dollars a month and you have no other debt and you have fifteen thousand dollars of disposable income a month, being leveraged is probably you're you're okay. You can whatever, you can be leveraged. He wants mm -hmm. you to take that money and put it somewhere else where it's going to grow faster, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So he's saying if you can if you can leverage your money at four and invest it at 14, you make a 10% arbitrage, mm -hmm. it, is what he's saying. And But where I see people get into trouble, including people that preached that program back in the early 2000s, <clears throat> they wanted you to get into one of those pick-a-pay loans where you're, the, the minimum payment is not even paying all oh, the interest that's due, yeah. and you're getting negative amortization, and they wanted you to invest it. But they, and, they don't have those loans anymore, do they? No, no. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm refinancing a guy today who is in one right now. 
Yeah, he's had it for a long one? time. Been in, oh been in forever. Gosh, yeah, wow. and I, I saw it. I look at his. Um, he sent me the mortgage statement. I'm looking at it sideways because he sent me a snapshot, and it, and I saw minimum payment, interest only payment, thirty year fixed, fifteen year fixed. So he survived through the 2008. Yeah, okay, he, right. he always made the thirty year fixed payment in the oh. deal. But people that make the 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 minimum payment, like one percent of the balance, we're not even paying interest. If interest rates were high, like right now. They're negatively amortizing. But that's not the, the question you asked me. The question is, is it better leverage? If you're not in a really good cash flow situation, no, because the, the time that you don't have any money, what are you going to do to make your payment? If you don't, mm. if you're variable income or you get laid off from your job, is it, if you have a, if you have a ton of debt, it's going to hurt you. Dave Ramsey on the other side says, don't even get a two-year car loan. Save up until you pay cash for a car. Get on a 15-year. Now, we're not in Nebraska. I grew up in Louisiana. You could get a 15-year loan in, in Louisiana. It wouldn't be bad. But in California, when in, in, in this area, five hundred thousand dollars like an entry level home buyer, right? Home, home, mm -hmm. first first time home, and so like to 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 do a fifteen year when rates were at seven percent or even six percent like they are now, um, that's man, a that's big, a big payment. That's is. like seven thousand dollar payment. And if you are a you know you know a teacher making fifty thousand a year, no, you can't do that. So I think you know these are both men that are well-meaning and they're both on the extremes. I think somewhere in the middle is somewhere probably in good. The middle, yeah. You know? <laughs> do, do you think uh, we're going to see 50-year mortgages? No. We had 40-year mortgages. We had... Uh, we had or still have? We had them. For, well, there are still... Okay. So part of uh, the, the Dodd-Frank, um, you know, reorganization of mm -hmm. finances and, and, and all this stuff, we, it, cut, it created something called a qualified mortgage, a QM. And so to qualify as a QM... Uh, you cannot be, and that's something like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginnie mm -hmm. Mae, like FHA, VA, all your kind of what we call your normal everyday loans, a paper loans. Uh, you can't be interest only. You can't be over 30 years. Can't have any negative amortization. Can't have a prepay. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's something else, but those are yeah, the top yeah, four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but now they're Alt-A programs. So there's these non-QM now they call it. it used to be called Alt-A. And, um, and, they, and there's some interesting loans on that one. The mm -hmm. DSCR cash flow loans and bank statement loans and things like that. Like you could run a business where you have all these receipts come in, but you could have high expenses. So, uh, but you could use half of your receipts that come in as income. Oh. Hmm. So if you have a business that pulled in a million dollars of receipts, but it's a high uh, cost of goods business where you have like nine hundred thousand dollars worth, you only really brought in a hundred thousand of real money that has still has to pay other things. Mm. But I could use. Five hundred thousand dollars over the income for you. Oh, so it's they're interesting loans. That's an interesting loan. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. but not on the forty year. We're not really doing that. Speaking of interesting loans, um, so I'm kind of hearing more and more right now about reverse mortgages um, as baby boomers are uh, retiring and some are dying already. Um, there's this uh, big. I sort of I don't know if it's really popular right now or it. It was popular a little bit before, but I'm hearing even here locally, some loan officers are into reverse like specializing mortgage. in those yeah. now. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? How mm -hmm. much do you know of reverse mortgages? Yeah. Is this a good program for some people or not? Are there pros and cons like to everything else? Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's go home. <laughs> so, so uh, yes, I don't do a lot of of those, I don't, I, I don't tend to do the loans that you have to specialize in. And there's a lot on the line, like the, like renovation loans, the, the reverse mortgages. I've done mm -hmm. a few in, in my 20 years. Kristen has done more than me and she's only started doing them in the last two years. Okay. So she's a better outlet for that, mm -hmm. but I do know about them. So you can do with a, with a reverse mortgage. Number one, there used to be all kinds of, used to be a lot more, a lot less regulated. Now, almost all of the loans that are done there are some private label loans, like Mutual of Omaha has a, a private label. It's mm -hmm. just one example. But um, most of them are backed by FHA. And so they're called a HECM reverse. And I, it's a home equity conversion mortgage, something like that, I believe. And it's a FHA. So it's it's literally backed by the U.S. government. And they're not bad loans. Like, they're not, you're not going to get ripped off. It's like well, the a pricing lot of people is going to be pretty are, same. are saying and thinking well, so that the, they're you know, scams. Okay, so more than any other loan, uh, they're 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 set with their guidelines, and they are like literally if you you price them out if you do a heckum, the FHA backed one they're all priced the same. It's not like one person can price them differently than another. 
in the, in, and so we, we, we got a quote from one person and we looked, okay, there's the rate they were given. Okay, let's put ours together. And it was like the same thing. Mm -hmm. And like, you've already talked to this guy. Do you not like him for some reason? Do you feel he's slimy? Is there something you feel like you're not being, am I just, can I validate that he's giving you a good deal? If that's all you're looking for, he's giving you a good deal. Mm -hmm. So use him, no use mm -hmm. starting the conversation okay, over with me, okay, right? And so um, I think that in the, in the past, there were a lot of off like, market loans and like people can get ripped off mm -hmm. but like the no one's going to steal your house um the government's not going to take it from you all that kind of stuff and, it's and like, those guys safe. who do it they're they're and under they're, a lot of they're, they're reg regulated highly mm -hmm. regulated like financial services right? yeah yeah and, and and you should be when you're dealing with elders i think i think the more the most i just didn't like the ones that i did do uh there was always something weird about it like the like a, a uh, one of the children of the couple doing it was like lurking mm -hmm. around like they were going to get some money or something mm -hmm. or a granddaughter was like doing all the talking for the grandparents yeah. and it's like I, my spidey senses went off I'm like I just don't you know I don't want to be dealing with this my all, my, all day long every day yeah, yeah. yeah but they're fine loans mm -hmm. alright next question is, is is the fun stuff okay so AI it's taken over a lot of different businesses um, we're not really sitting here today This is really not <laughs> This <us>. is AI. <laughs> hey, right. That voice that you hear, it's, yeah. it's not me. That's it's right. AI. Um, but uh, it's it's helping a lot of businesses. Um, some people, it's just taking taking their job. It's going to replace them, yeah. Um, has AI, uh, is there any threats of AI for you, for your business? Um, and are you implementing and using AI in some ways right now? You know, so a lot, so a lot of the software that we use has things that help us through with AI. Like it, the AI is in, is enhancing our ability to search for opportunities to help our clients. The time, like mm -hmm. when it might be a time to refinance, it's giving us heads up. It uh, we have AI built into some of our, our our loan origination software that allows us to do things faster. Okay. Um, there are there's software that allows it. You can plug in someone's tax returns, or you can plug in someone's pay statements or W 2s or bank statements, and it immediately calculates stuff for you. It's um. So those the are the characters you're talking about. Yeah. But what about like threats? But, but threats to like, am I as a, so there was a company called Better, or there is a company called Better Mortgage and they are like all AI. There's a, there's another company called Figure that has home equity lines of credit where they don't actually um, figure uh, mm -hmm. just like it sounds. And they don't actually have underwriters. Uh, they don't have doctor R's. They don't have uh, quality control. They, you literally like, you start entering information in And it gives you like for your income, gives you a few different ways. Like you can upload a bank statement and it sees your deposits and it factors in what you're, if you have something you're getting every two weeks, what does that mean? How much you really made overall? What's your, it, it, um, AVM, so automated, automated valuation models mm -hmm. have AI built into them. So it allows us to see like what a home should be worth. So that you can go through and do a loan with uh, a home equity line of credit with figure, go all the way through and you're never talking to a person. So, hmm. but is it like, it's a very small box. And, and if you don't fit in that box, you're not going to qualify. So um, is it going to, I think that what, when we're looking at the big picture here, we're, you and I are helping people purchase their largest asset. They're making the biggest decision of their life. And they're probably going to do it. If you treat them right, they're going to, you're going to do it three, four, five times with them. And then you're, they're going to refer you to their, to their kids. AI can't help someone feel good. Because you, you, like, you, there's a saying that they're saying that people don't know what you they don't remember what you said, but they definitely remember how, the, how you how made they, them feel. Mm -hmm. So AI can't make someone feel warm and fuzzy. AR can't give AI can't give someone the confidence to 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 make the move. AI is not going to uh, in your in your field is not going to renegotiate when when credit when uh, the sewer lines busted, right? And so AI is probably not going to tell them. Hey, look, this is a multi-step process. We're going to buy this home right now with the least amount of points as possible so that you can refinance in a year and not have to waste points on two because points are really good when you spread them over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to refinance next year, you shouldn't do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not going to tell them that. No, as you're, as you're you saying I mean? this, I'm just thinking about like, um, this is kind of how, you know, how we grew up. And what I'm saying is like a little bit older people, um, they're more, uh, they like to be around people. They're more into relationships. Yes. I'm looking at, at millennials right the now. Millennials they, won't make contact. they don't have, yeah. they don't have, an, they don't maybe have a voicemail. Maybe for them, they're like, hey, if I, you know, I'm 
you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna feel good with my robot. You know, I'm gonna make out with my robot. And, hey, there may, and hey that is, may be the niche that you. <laughs> so here's what okay, I can go down the road when think about it. And I guess luckily for me, I'm 52 years old. Uh, I'll be 61 of my daughter, my last one, my 13 year old graduates high school. I mean, college in four years. Um, I, I could leave then if I need to. Mm -hmm. I love the business. If it's still cool and fun, and I'm having a great time talking to people and helping them with their dreams, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it until I can't walk in the office, you know? So I think that you're either going to see one, we have already seen an augment what we can do for people. It helps us go faster, do things faster. Um, I don't see it disrupting it anywhere in the near future. If I okay, so funny thing, when I joined Canopy back in, uh, 2021, I went out, uh, went to a top golf in Utah with the, the two owners and the head of sales and so, and we were just hanging out. They were meeting my team. We were meeting them and we played a little golf uh, or hit some balls. And uh, one of the guys that was there who had introduced me, introduced me to Canopy said, man, I'm really worried about AI taking our jobs. And the head of sales goes, and this was three and a half years ago mm -hmm. when we were like, this is before NVIDIA blew up yeah, and all, yeah, the real yeah. talk mm -hmm. about AI. And and he says, uh, hey, you don't need to worry about it. We, we tried for 10 years to build a company where we could exclude the loan officer and it didn't work. Mm. So like- that's an anecdote, but I'm telling you, I think that even if it does take over the mainstream, it's going to be in phases where, where it's the easiest possible scenario first, and then it branches out to another scenario. Forget about like the guy I'm helping today that's got three rental properties, uh, takes dividends, gets social security. There's multiple forms of income. It's mm -hmm. not going to do that right now. Mm -hmm. That may be later. Um, but but I, either it's going to augment us to help us do better, or it's going to, it's going to maybe cause think, make us go into do some other parts of the business, which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. And if so in 10 years, maybe I'm doing hard money because you're not going to definitely not going to have AI do hard money or <laughs> private money. You know what I'm saying? Or something like yeah, that. So yeah. there's always a, there's always an opportunity for someone that's looking for it. And you know, one of the things I always told myself is that I find opportunities where others don't see it. Yeah. And so I, I think we're fine. And then by the way, people getting feeling, getting the warm and fuzzies with their loan. Uh, maybe not like the AI robot, but like, uh, but people getting the warm and fuzzies with Better. Better's a company. If you remember it back in the pandemic that laid off by they got all these people on a, on a on a Zoom call and he laid off everyone, and that's the first I heard of it. Wow, he just laid off a bunch of people because like they didn't have the business. So if it was so awesome, he wouldn't have had to lay off like half his staff. Yeah, on a on a video. I I asked Patrick but David a question, uh, and he his answer was he said that if you are, whether in the real estate, in the loans, like, and you are really good at building relationships, it's like, you should be solid for at least the next 30 years. Yeah. So, okay, this is a, is a question I ask realtors all the time. What is it that you, what is it about you that is different than every other realtor out there? And you're going to get it wrong. I'm just going to tell you, so don't feel bad. You're in a big support group called everybody. <laughs> so what's the one thing about you that's different than every other single person? Like, what do you have that other people don't have? What do I have? Well, we're all different. So I, some, there's something that I can have that- It's tied somebody, to what you just told me. My personality, individuality. And you have an amazing, you have an amazing personality <laughs> and you're an ingenuity and you're go get it. You can, all that stuff. But like, if you tell someone like, I'm an amazing negotiator. Okay, someone else can be that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have all these designations behind my name. Okay, someone else could have that too. Um, I'll be, I'm available 24 seven. Anyone can do that, right? So relationships. So, that's it, relationships. And AI can't build relationships. Mm. Maybe it can down the road. I mean, <laughs> if it can make Jerome Powell look like he's a rock star dancing <laughs> on stage, you know, maybe so. Yeah. But relationships, <clears throat> that's the driver for our business. And if you're in a relationship-based business, then you're gonna, you're gonna be fine. Mm. If you build relationships, yeah. you really do everything that a realtor says, or a loan officer says, I'm your realtor for life, or a loan officer for life. If you really do that, you're good. If you don't, you're out of then then you're stuck now fighting for your commission, one percent, two percent, three percent, yeah, whatever yeah. it may be. Mm -hmm. And and that's all you're judged mm -hmm. on is how much do you cost? Yeah. Not yeah. what if you but if you focus and lead with what value am I gonna bring, you're always gonna be okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So I could not believe this what happened last week. You guys closed the loan in nine days on Talk the purchase. Talking about value. Okay. I like while it. other regular mortgage companies, banks, whatever, the standard is 30 days. Yeah. How the hell did you guys pull that off? So it, long story short is we control the process from application through funding, right? I control it all in my branch. The only thing that I don't do in my branch, I don't do underwriting, but it's 
So then we underwrite ahead of time. So um, forever and always, and it always has been this way with my team, is that my two goals are that we're going to help our realtors help more clients by closing faster, and they can spend more time either helping more clients, right? So if you can close an escrow in 14 days, because you have a limited, as a realtor, you have a limited um, bandwidth of how many people you can put in the car and go show homes to and mm -hmm. write offers. And you, there's only so many balls you can juggle at one mm -hmm. time, right? So if I can help you juggle your balls and you're, you're done in two weeks, you can spend the other two weeks, instead of spending 30 days on one client, you can spend the other two weeks going get another client helping that client. And so I want to help my, my realtors close more business by by but what we can do for them. And I want to help my buyers win their first or second offer. And I think it's huge, in an, especially in an appreciating market when home prices are going up. If I can help them get that first or second offer accepted, I'm probably going to save them like 10, 15, 20 grand. Because if you lose out on a home and someone beats you, whether they whether they made a higher offer or not, that home now is, is, a, is a new comparable by which your next house is going to be priced. Yeah. Okay. So we've always been chasing on our team like the process that we can use to help clo close really fast or help our realtors close fast. So what we do with every client that will let us is we get all their documentation in ahead of time and we pre-underwrite them. It's not me looking at it and giving what's called a pre-approval. So that, you know, a pre-qual is where we have a conversation, you as a buyer, me as a loan officer, you tell me how much you make, you tell me your credit score. I'll, I may or may not pull your credit. And, and I tell you, okay, you can qualify for 500,000 if you put 20% down. Mm -hmm. And I just did the math on the back of a napkin or something like that, right? Uh, pre a pre-approval is when you actually give me your documents, like your W-2s or your pay statements or your, you know, mm -hmm. if you're self-employed, your, your, your 1040s or whatever. And I, I do the math myself as a skilled loan officer. I do the math. Okay, thumbs up. We're good. What we do is we pre-approve and we send it. We actually, I do all that. And then we send it off to the underwriter and they underwrite it. So by the time you're ready to make an offer, you're already underwritten, which most loan officers if you're, a, if you're a normal loan officer and I'm your, okay, what happens? I'm your client. I call you on Sunday afternoon and say, hey, I want to make an offer. Okay, cool. You get an offer out, letter out, uh, approval letter out. I get it accepted on Monday. Uh, I say, hey, we got accepted. You know, You're like, all right, great. Hey, um, uh, here's some things I need from you. And you'll send me a quick little list, right? Because mm -hmm. you haven't talked to me in like a yeah, month. Yeah. And so I give you another pay statement, new bank statement. And then you give all that, you package it together and give it to your processor. Processor takes a day, gets back to you with a list. Hey, they're missing X, Y, Z. And then you get back to the buyer, uh, you got to go get X, Y, Z. They get it back to you. You're mm -hmm. golfing because you're a loan officer. So you, the next day you give it back to the <laughs> processor. They have a 24 hour turn time. And then they go, okay, good. I now submit it to underwriting. Well, we're a week into escrow. So most, most loan officers, their deals don't get submitted. The loans don't get submitted to underwriting um, for like a week. So how are you going to close in two weeks? You can't, mm. right? So because then the LE gets issued and all that yeah, kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we do is like, you go to make an offer as a buyer, and I say, Paul, awesome. Hey, we haven't got, we haven't talked about rates. Let's talk about rates. Let's make sure you're good still. And then I need your most, I need three things from you. I need your most recent pay statement, bank statement, whatever else I'm missing. Mm -hmm. And I get that back. I need that back from you before your offer is accepted. Because when your offer is accepted on day one of the contract, we're going to electronically disclose to you. You're going to sign them you know, via DocuSign, yeah. we're going to lock your loan. We're going to order your appraisal. We're going to submit the file to underwriting. We're going to reach out to escrow and get all their fees. And then you're going to go get your homeowner insurance all on day one. Wow. And then, then we get underwriting approval day two. The appraisal is done in, in seven days. We pay extra for the appraisal. We pay like six fifty for an appraisal. And this is like Placer, El Dorado, Sacramento, Yolo, mm -hmm. the, the local areas. And, uh, and I get, I can, I, if I need it back in three days, I can, I'll pay extra at the branch to get it back in three days whatever we need. So in this one, in that, in that particular case, we happen to get an appraisal waiver. So all of our loans that we, if we run them through Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac to find out if we get an appraisal waiver, which means that we don't need to order an appraisal. So we take seven days off the process and, you know, and we can mm -hmm. go in and make an offer like 14 day close with no loan contingency, no appraisal contingency. At that point, yeah. it's cash. Yeah. Is this your own system that you created like this, or is this just canopy mortgage standard? No, there's people at canopy that can't close in 25 days. Wow. So it's my, this I have your... in my branch, I run the branch. We have one person that does processing, third party verifications, like verifications of deposit, verifications of employment, things like that. She also does, she processes, she also does um, docs out, and then she funds. So we can do all that. So th this is huge for realtors. Like wh when was it that you realized that, hey, if I get this down, this is going to be huge in terms 2011. of 2011. 2011? Yeah. It's when I first started coaching, getting uh -huh. coached. 
and I saw other people and they were closing fast and they were winning deals. Mm. Like remove the friction to take our offer. Because what do, what do sellers really want more than anything? Mo sellers. Most of them. They just want their money. They want to get their money and they want to move on and buy another house. Like 90%, maybe yeah, 95. Yeah. yeah. Or they're doing a 1039, 1031 exchange or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so what we want to do, and did you know this is an interesting stat? Um, 60 so ish percent of, of the time when a buyer gets their offer accepted by a seller and then they later back out, 60 ish percent is financing issues. Yes. Which is why we yes. underwrite ahead of time. Yes, that's true. Especially mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's probably more than that now. Yeah. I would yeah. think. And then appraisals coming in mm -hmm. low or inspections or the, the top, those are the top three. Wow. And so like, if we can go in and a seller's biggest fear is that they're, they're going to accept our buyer's offer. And then in the next two weeks or so, something's going to happen and they bail and they have to start all over. And now the house isn't staged anymore. They move the staging, oh, they boxed yeah. up stuff. Yeah. It's not as pretty. Yeah. And then you've got this 40 year old virgin of a house that's been on the market, came off the market. Why they come off the market? You know, how come it's back on the market? Oh, why, yeah. why hasn't yeah. it sold? Yep. You yep. know? And yep. so, if we can just get them that, if we can convince the seller that A, they're going to get their money, they're going to get it quick, and they're not going to have to worry about a buyer backing out because of loan issues, man, we've removed a lot of friction. I looked up online. You guys have nearly 200 reviews. You're very uh, kind. It's like 149. I checked no, no. It. I checked on all platforms. Oh, oh, that's oh. Just I, I only look at Google. No, I, I looked at oh, other okay, platforms. Oh, okay. I got you. So okay. Well, that's cool. I didn't know Nearly that. 200. So, man, I'll, I'll call you uh, when you guys get to 200 yeah. and maybe, you know, I'll send you a, there we some, go. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> a special G. You put so, on what do you think um, makes your clients want to go on there and write that review for you guys? What do you think? So it's the process. I, we set up the process uh, and everyone on the team is on board with this. So we want to get five-star reviews, but we don't want to just get them. We want to earn them, right? And so like when I bought my house, uh, we closed late. So everything, that went, I, I got in their business because of, of my, when I bought a house. Mm. Um, we closed late. Uh, the, the rate I got told I was going to get was a quarter percent higher than what I was told, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I had to bring 3,000 extra dollars to closing and I had to drive to uh, Mountain House, Mountain Home, whatever it is, by Tracy, where all the windmills are and stuff. Okay. Uh, I had to drive there from Roseville. I could have signed in Roseville. And so it was like, and the guy was a friend of mine. He wasn't, he wasn't a bad person. He was just sloppy. And so it was a bad experience. And so, it, you know, you do one thing wrong, people are going to give you some grace, right? Yes. Two things wrong, they're irritated and probably not going to give you a review. Uh, three things wrong. It's systemic. You're a train wreck, or you're or you're deceptive in mm -hmm. their mind, right? And so, we set it up at the very beginning. We we let people know that hey, here's what our process is going to look, look like, so they are aware. We tell them why we do what we're going to do. Every week on Tuesday, we check in with them, or every major milestone. Like if we get a if we submit the file for for underwriting, I let them know, hey, we just submitted your loan to underwriting. Should have in a day or two at the most, mm -hmm. right? And so we present with this five star process that makes them want to. And then every week when we check in with them, every time I talk to a client or a realtor, you probably asked me or heard me ask this before, hey, Paul, is there anything I could be doing to take better care of you? Anything else you need from me? Nope. Awesome. Cool. Um, next week, I'm going to ask you, if you're a buyer, I'm going to say, hey, Paul, it, on a scale of one, after we've talked about what we're talking about, I just finished my, my, my close, if you will, um, is, hey, like, hey, Paul, on a scale of one to five, how good of a job are we doing? Hey, man, you're doing a five out of five. Awesome. If there's any time that I'm not taking care of you that in a way that would, would make you feel that we're giving you five out of five service, could you let me know? Because I'll, I'll either fix it or I'll explain why we have to do it. Mm. Like giving me bank statements mm -hmm. and, and you give me a bank statement, doesn't have a header, footer, whatever, or you're missing a page, you redacted something, I got to get the document again from you, right? And yeah. so, but I'll make you happy to give it to me. Mm -hmm. I'll explain yeah, so you don't feel yeah. like I'm being mm -hmm. unrealistic. And so, and then at the end, I ask, hey, I like to ask two questions. When we close escrow, was there one thing that we did that stood out about what you liked about working with my team? So what was one thing that you liked about it? And what one thing could we have done better? And they're either going to say, you could have done X, Y, Z. But most of the time, and if that's it, awesome. Hey, let me check into that. I don't know what happened, but let me check into it. Is it okay if I get back to you in about a week after I check it? That I want you, you feel heard at that mm -hmm. point, right? Mm -hmm. And then later I could probably go back and still get a five out of five review. But if, if they say, man, you guys are awesome. You, 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 what I loved about X, Y, Z. Hey, would, could I bug you? You, you know, to just leave a two second review on Google to that, just yeah. exactly what you said. Yeah, go for it. And they'll do it. Oh, that's but cool. you pr like provide the, the service first, right? Yes. Like, like I, I, like customer service is marketing. 
Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't need to advertise yeah. a whole mm -hmm. lot. He has great mm -hmm. care of people. What kind of support uh, team system you have in your office? A rock star team. You're awesome. I mean, you, okay, you so, must have. I mean, I, I know to to do this, uh, to close the loans in nine days and and be on top of uh, everything and having multiple transactions at the same time. Um, I'm sure that when you were starting, you were probably doing a lot of the things yourself. Yeah. And as you grew, you had to get the people on your team. And how did that process take place? Did you realize like, okay, this is what I'm good at. I'm gonna, I have to stick with, you know, being at this role yeah. and I gotta delegate these things. Yeah. So my job is to, is to do things that are revenue generating, right? So bringing in clients, taking care of realtors. So meeting new realtors, meeting new, I, I, I sat down with an estate planning attorney today. So people who can refer their clients to us and, and build relationships with them. Mm -hmm. AI is not gonna do that. Nope. Um, and um, and a lot of realtors don't like working with, by the way, a lot of good realtors don't like working with, like the best realtors don't like working with like big, big banks because they have less oh. control. <laughs> they don't like working with, um, and I'm not, nothing bad about big banks or credit unions or anything like that. They don't they're, specialize in, in- But they're in, great for refis, yeah. right? Their great rates are, you know, um, but also <laughs> um, they don't like working with online lenders. They want some accountability and they want it to, to hurt if they don't send business back anymore. A person from Rocket Mortgage, like whatever, I, I know I probably shouldn't say that, or any big insert here, internet, you know, bank mm -hmm. is, is not gonna have any accountability to that, that realtor partner, right? Mm -hmm. And so if they mess up, whatever, and move it on, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I learned early on that I build relationships and I'll always be in business, but I also learned that I should not uh, be doing things that I don't like because I won't do them. And when you're the quote unquote boss, like if you didn't like doing something, you don't have to do it, do you? I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Like if someone, if yeah. you're supposed to write so many handwritten thank you cards a day. No. Right, but if you don't like doing it, Who's gonna tell you, Paul, you should really, no one's gonna tell you don't to do it. Yeah. So, so we have someone that does that. In fact, mm -hmm. we use a service that does handwritten cards for us. Um, so we, to answer the question, what does my team look like? We have uh, Kristen who's been with me since 2011. So she now does loans too, but she still does things like when I'm out of the office, like here, if I need to lock a loan or uh, solve a income problem or talk to a buyer or whatever, she'll call them. So she's straight up just like me, except better personality, mm. right? She smiles and gives hugs. Um, so, and people love her. She's like the mom of the branch. She also takes care of the other loan officers we have. If they have questions, she kind of answers their questions and stuff. And then, um, and she does her own. And then she also kind of handles things sometimes part of the way from contract to close. Uh, her sister, Sarah, is on the front end. She's been with us since 2020. And she handles uh, front end, like, Someone calls, if they, someone calls in right now and wants to talk about doing a loan, they're gonna get talked to right now. They're gonna get set up with an appointment with me. They're gonna get the basic questions answered. And they're, if they want to, they, they'll even go on and do their application and get upload the documents. That way when they meet with me, it's gonna be productive for them. Mm -hmm. And I've coached her to say it like I would say it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? And so we're all using the same language. Um, and then we have Jessica, who's like processing um, docs, funding, third-party verifications, things like that. So there's uh, we're, there's four of us wow. that do my loans mm -hmm. and Kristen's loans, and then we have a couple other loan officers. Mm -hmm. I, and when did I? You asked when did I realize I should do that? Yeah. Uh, 2011. I listened to a CD by a couple, two different CDs by two guys, and 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 realized that you can't do more than about five loans a month um, without having a team, and because. And if I'm out, if I'm doing chasing down documents, I'm no longer talking to people about new opportunities, right? Uh, and I can pay someone X amount of money here to do this job, just like you in your business, right? Um, you don't probably go put out your signs. No, no, it's because you can pay someone a dollar per hour and they're happy to do it and it, they love doing it, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I listened to a guy a long time ago. He said um, he called it your uh, triad of awesomeness. Triad. Okay, so you want to draw something? Like draw this. Like draw three circles. Like draw one circle on the top, uh -huh. and then like this, like on the bottom, like almost like like they're stacked. Okay, okay. two, but overlap a little bit in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each of them, uh -huh. and where those three circles overlap, it's only maybe like one percent of all the things of the size of those circles. Like that's it. Okay. That little bit of space where all three are connected. Mm -hmm. That's your triad of awesomeness. So that one circle on the top is one that makes you money. So put a dollar sign in the one on the top. Mm -hmm. The one on the bottom right is what you're good at. Okay. 
So it's just good? Yeah. And then uh, the other one is what makes you happy, what you like to do. When you're only doing that little 1%, man, that's your triad of awesomeness, and no one can take that away from you. How do you figure that out? You find out all, you list out every single thing that, that has to happen in your practice that you that makes you money. Mm-hmm. And then the other one, you, you look everything that makes you happy. Like it, it makes me happy to look through appraisals and check them out and see that they came in above and there's no issues and all this other stuff and see did the people leave their toilet seats open or not or whatever, all that kind of stuff. I feel that energy. And we take pictures and I send them to my <laughs> wife because <laughs> she, it's her big I, pet peeve is like a toilet seat that's open. <laughs> But I do feel that energy whenever I, I see an email or when Tatiana sends me uh, the, the appraisal came in of yeah, value, like, no conditions. I'm like, it's awesome, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't make me money. And um, I, I'm good at it, but I'm not good at In our company, we actually have to log certain things about the appraisal it has to be logged. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's, it's like butchering my soul. <laughs> right? Forget about mean. it. Oh man, that's so funny. Um, you guys it seems like you guys have a pretty fun culture in your company. I've seen some uh, social media posts. How do you guys do Kristen that? Kristen does that. We did. Kristen we actually does? had. We have a gal, Monica, uh, who does all of our videos like that, and she mm-hmm. edits them for us. Mm-hmm. And um, she's really good. So anyone looking for a really good like uh, social media presence. 916-871-7578, call me. Uh, she's really good. I'm not making any money off of her, but she's a good person. Um, and so this morning we did a few. Um, Kristen has all the ideas, and she basically puts it in my calendar, and I'm mm. trapped. They come to me. <laughs> I they, She's learned to me not to – like I don't have to go somewhere to do it. She comes to me and goes, hey, it's video content today. Hope you wore a good shirt. <laughs> or she'll text me in the morning because she gets up at like, oh, dark 30. She's like Jocko. And so um, – she, she was, she'll say like, where, where, where your best shirt? Where's video content day today. <laughs> and she books like two hours and I sneak in and out of it for like an hour. And then I get a phone call and leave. But she, we did like 10 videos this morning in like an hour. We just, she's just really good at laying them up. So that's how you do it. You just, she puts it on the calendar. Say, this is the time we're doing content. Uh-huh. Our, my next idea is I want to do one where if, if loan officers uh, were being elected, and then I was going to do a big Trump wig and be like, every other loan officer is a total disaster. No one in the history of the world has ever done loans like we have. And then she was going to be like, like Kamala Harris, like we help our home buyers be unshackled from what has been. Unburdened. Unburdened by what has been. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, uh, we're working on that one. It's going to be an awesome sound, just total sound bites, but it's going to be fun. But we love it. It's just fun stuff. Are we expecting to get business from it? No. But like, as you can tell, like I'm, you are pretty driven and serious. I love to have fun, but most of my day is like, we're moving forward. And I, um, I, I love it. It makes me happy, but people sometimes like, be like, Hey man, why don't you smile? You know? So we're going to, it makes people realize that I have this other personality. I'm not, or I'm not, I'm not just all business. Mm-hmm. You know, I, we joke like, she, um, I say Shelly and my, Kristen, like almost interchange. My, Shelly's my wife, obviously. Right. So Kristen's like, like, um, show friends. I'm show business. Mm. So when you get us as a team, you get the number cruncher, high level, 30,000 foot view person, bullet point person. And you also, if you need a hug, you'll get a hug, mm. right? She'll take care of you. Yeah. If you want to just call her vent, people call her invent all the time. Wow. Yeah. That's it cool. Works. That's cool. Well, Ken, thank you so much for doing this. Um, how can people find you? Uh, Ken at KenMcKee.com. My phone number is 916-871-7578. And um, anytime, love to talk to you. If you like this video, here's another one for you to watch. If you don't want to miss the next video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button.